the falsehood that you can create your own reality you know sometimes when you hear motivational speakers in their videos they will tell you that you can create your own reality you can be whatever you want you can do whatever you want well you don't actually need to be that clever or that wise to understand that you cannot create your own reality this is an impossibility and anyone who just exercises their brains just for five seconds we realize that you cannot a human being cannot create their own reality what do i mean by that well you first of all you have to go to the bathroom the fact that you still have to go to the bathroom means that there's something that is happening on you which you cannot control do you see that you still get hungry so you still need to eat food and this food may not necessarily be made by you you can have the money in terms of you know going and buy it at the food market or the you know the fruits and veg market or at the supermarket but the fact that someone makes it for you means that you cannot create your own reality because in this reality that you're going to create you still depend on someone to give you something do you see that even if you were still able to plow your own food, harvest your own food, and probably be able to store it as all men should be able to do, but you will still require rain. And you can't control the rain. You still require the sun. You don't have your own sun. If the sun just disappears, you will not be able to eat. How then do you create your own reality? This is just foolishness and falsehood. Because the idea that you can create your own reality must mean that you must be able to do what you want, when you want, and get the results that you want without anything changing it. Do you see that? You have to be able to do what you want, when you want, without any factor changing your own plans or your own purposes. If you cannot do what you want when you want, you can't create your own reality. Because while you're still busy trying to create your own reality, you still have to go to the bathroom. Or you get diarrhea. And then now you spend more hours in the bathroom while you were supposed to be busy creating your own reality. Do you see that? So this is foolishness, but this, this is not out of touch with what is going on in our modern world in which people are made to believe that they could be cast. Because... It, it all starts there. It starts where people tell you that, you know, you can create your own reality. And eventually, they're going to tell you that basically, you know, because obviously to be able to create your own reality, that means you have to be autonomous. Meaning that being autonomous, that means you're not depending on anyone for anything. You see, that makes you what? A God. So it's, it's something that people have to be careful of, especially Christians. Why? Because... This is not a teaching that just comes out of the air. No teaching comes out of the air. You see, there is always some kind of influence putting things in men's minds and men's hearts to preach to other people. And these people hang on to these teachings, they hang on to these doctrines, and they get lost. You see, the, the, the thing about the human being is the, the problem about the human being is that because of his fallen nature, he will always take something that rises him above where he is, even if he was perfected. Do you see that? Because of our fallen nature, we want to, we want our egos to be stroked, to, to be made to believe that you can actually create your own reality. You can't. You cannot create your own reality. It is impossible. You see, first of all, a woman bathed you. You see, the fact that someone gave birth to you means that you cannot create your own reality because you were created. In terms of the woman and the man, you were produced. How then can you create your own reality? You get sick. How then can you create your own reality? You will die. How then can you create your own reality? Anyone or anything that is able to create its own reality must not be able to be sick. And it must not die. Because death means that it's the end of something. Something malfunctioned and you died. It can be the heart, the brain, the eyes, whatever. 
whatever organ which is important to live. How can then man, having at least two brain cells in their skulls which is working, stand in front of other people, say open with their own mouth that you can create your own reality? How can people do that? This is impossible. The fact that a human being is at the mercy of the elements like cold and heat and, and, and snow and all these things means that he can't create his own reality. You can't even stop the seasons. You can't choose that when it's supposed to be summer and say, I don't want a summer, I want a winter. You can't do that. So you are at the mercy of nature. Nature does whatever it pleases with you and you have to accept that well, it's going to rain. I'm not going to stop. All I have to do is just hide myself from the rain. It's going to snow. I'm not going to stop the snow. All I have to do is hide myself from the snow so I don't become cold. But yet you believe that you can create your own reality. I mean, people who believe this, do they really think, oh, oh, okay. So, you know, the problem is that, you know, when people have heroes and role models and idols, idols, is that they, they put them on, 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 an, on a pedestal that whatever they say, they don't question what they're saying. The question is not to say what you mean. No, the question is not to say in your own mind, think about this thing. Think about the authenticity of this thing which this man is giving you. The authenticity of this doctrine which this man is giving you. Because that if people were to take this and apply it in their own lives, it will bring peace, joy, and order. If it does not do that, it's false. That's the only way of validating any doctrine. When Jesus says, love your neighbors yourself, treat other people as you like to be treated, you know that if this was to be the case, that people, because generally they want to be loved, to be cherished, to be valued, if all peoples across the world were valuing each other, loving one another, not hating one another, you will have joy, peace, and order. Do you see that? And someone might say, but what about loving God with all your heart, your mind, strength? Well, if it is God who defines what love is, then it means that for you to understand that love, you have to love him. And because when you love him, you're going to follow him. And when you follow him, then he is going to show you and enable you to love your neighbor as yourself. That's how you apply the laws of God in real life. But when someone comes to you and tells you that you can be, I mean, you can create your own reality, it's like someone tell you that you can be a God. It's like, how can, how can someone tell you that you can be a God? How does he know? Has he ever been a God before? Because the only way that I'll be able to tell someone that you can be Christian is if I am Christian and I know how it works and I know how you become Christian. So that I could guide this person on how to be a Christian, believe in Christ, and by faith you be saved, and by the grace of the Lord you are saved, not by your works, but the grace of the Lord, who's going to put his spirit in you, will enable you to do works for the glory of the Lord who has given you. So you are saved by grace in terms of the fact that you didn't do anything to end this salvation, but this salvation makes you a child of God because God put his spirit in you, and it is this spirit whom God is going to use to do the things that he wants to do to achieve his purposes. You are not being saved because of what you are doing. You were saved because of the grace of God. So it means that when you have that understanding, you are able to teach a person what a Christian is and what he looks like and what he does and how he acts like. But how then can someone come and tell you that you are God without him knowing how to be a God. How, where's the blueprint? Where's the manuscript? How do you, what is the first step in becoming a God? So when a man comes and tells you that you can create your own reality, has he created his own reality? And ask him, what is his own reality? Because a blind man can, 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 can live in his, in his blind world, in his dark world, and believe that he's only, he's, he has his own reality because he doesn't see what is going on around him. You see, so you can think that you created your own reality because you have surrounded yourself with things which agree with everything that you say because 
they want to get something from you and you believe that now you got your own reality you understand that because motivational speaking is, is i don't know is taking this angle of of raising man and to believe that they could be gods with such doctrines as you know you can create your own reality because for you to create your own reality you have to be independent of anything and everything and you have to be dependent on yourself for all things mean that the very things that you would need to live you would have to have them within you that's how you can create your own reality without that you can't if you still have to pay your taxes to a government how then can you claim to be able to create your own reality this is an impossibility do you see that but it is the angle that motivational speaking is taking is you know this is not to say that all motivational speakers are saying this but when i look at motivational speaking i see that they are taking the angle of narcissism of nihilism of universalism that you know everything is right all roads lead to god everything is right there's no wrong and and this this thing that a man can be a god that's that's the three things that i see in motivational in motivational speaking the first one is is narcissism in which they are making people cut people off that the, if someone does not help you in your dreams and your goals and cut them off if someone does not help you in achieving in, in helping you achieve what you want to achieve cut them off you know you deserve people who can help you as if like the minute you cut your friends off your family off there'll be thousands of people waiting to help you as if they don't have their own last they were just waiting for you to come to them and that's what the motivation speakers are promoting narcissism and the other thing is 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 that they promoting universalism like like you know there's this thing this word that they also use this omnism or something like that where they're saying that all religions there's nothing right in them everything has something right in them it's it's like all religions you know they're all leading to one road or to one gate which is all to perfection and all that and they are pushing this thing into people's minds you see the very idea of truth if you understand what truth is because truth is a standard a standard can only be one you can't have two standards you can't have a blueprint for a house when an architect designs a building he makes only one plan he can't make two plans because it means that the builders will have to look at two plans and then now they'll have a target and then they'll say that if we get this of course in manufacturing you have the standard that is the the golden sample and then of course they're going to measure the quality in terms of is it five minute five percent below or five percent above or no it can never be above so there will be something which will be acceptable but there's only one golden sample and one standard one quality standard so if truth is standard it suggests by itself by itself being the standard it suggests that there can only be one source of that truth and if there's one source of that truth as, as in the case that i've given you in terms of manufacturing where they give you one sample or one standard or one con quality control standard it means that everyone must be must be trying to do that no one can be trying to do another thing by believing that they can at the end have the same quality standard as everybody else so you cannot be going the other way while jesus saying that i'm the way the life and the truth saying that i can go through another but still at the end find this god this jesus who's claiming to be the son of you understand that so for any christian to even believe that there are many ways to god is blasphemy you see but the motivation speakers are on that angle of saying that no yes you know there is god but but you know this is all these religions are all correct in their own way they are they are correct so it means that if you're hindu you're good to go if you're muslim you're good to go if you're christian you're good to go the very idea 
of truth suggests that there can only be one fountain of it. Because if there's two fountains, what unites them so that there could be one? There has to be something that unites them. And the one who unites them is the one who, make, who actually become the fountain of the two fountains. You see, the Son and the Holy Spirit, they are united by the Father. That's why they become the fountains, the two fountains. But in actual fact, they are one fountain because their source is one, who is God the Father. So the thing that I'm trying to present here is that people have to be careful in terms of listening to me or to anyone, a motivation speaker, a pastor, or a guru, of any, or anyone. In life, you have to validate everything that you believe. You have to make sure for yourself and no longer have faith but conviction that this which I believe and live by, I will never regret it. You see, so small things like you can create your own reality. All roads lead to God, even though they are not the same road. These are the things that put people in a lot of errors. Because you have to ask yourself, if truth is standard, can there be many truths? can then be many standards because a lot of the things that the gospel teaches is not far from the things that we already do in computers in industry and all these things you just have to be able to compare and say that in industry we create one standard and everybody must conform to that standard anybody who does not conform to that standard is a transgressor that means whatever he makes is rejected as quality how then can god who is the highest standard of all things which are good and righteous, have many ways to him, in which each everyone, everyone has their own standard. But somehow these standards, even though they cannot be united, but they will be united in God. Because someone is going to say, well, you know, products can come from different manufacturing companies. And then they go, you have to understand that it's not the many roads in terms of the manufacturing companies. It's the image of the product, which must look like the product which is accepted as the real standard of all products. Meaning that the image of God must be the same in all religions if God is one. And of course, the idea of a God suggests that they can only be one. Because if they are two, then they will have to be war to decide who's the real God. You see, that's why God stands as the only king. And anyone who is king, he has either allowed him to be king or has anointed him as king. Do you see that? So this kind of teachings, this nihilism and, 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 and narcissism from motivational speakers and, and this, this thing that the, all religions are right, they all lead to God, and this thing that you can you know, create your own reality, ultimately, eventually, they're going to tell you that you can be a God. It, it is very dangerous. And because motivational speakers will never actually correct you in anything they will only just you know on the surface say that you're doing this wrong you can do this so much good inside you all you have to do is just tap into it making you believe that there's something good inside you but you are the one who's blind not to see it not realizing that whatever is good is outside because what is outside you can see it but what's inside you can't see it so how would you even know that it's good unless it comes outside and went into you and because you knew that it was good when it went in so you know that it's there it's good wherever it is it's good because when you saw it for the first time it was good when it was outside but if it's inside you you don't even know because you have no standard for it but anyway that's that's all that i have to say uh, about this topic about uh, the falsehood that you can create your own reality by motivational speakers and if you have anything to say about what I've said here, you can just leave your comment below. And if you love receive comment, I mean content like this, you can subscribe to my channel so you can receive content like this. Thank you for listening.